Okay, let's all stand together for our call to worship. And Jesus said, Come. To the motherless and childless, he said, Come. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Okay, our first hymn this morning is Holy, 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 number 323. pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given to us. Father, a day that we can come together and, Lord, honor our moms. Lord, we we thank you for them. We ask, Father, that you would bless them this day. And, Lord God, not only this day, but each and every day, Father, we pray that you would be with them, watch over them. Lord, we commit this day 
into your hands, Father. And Lord, as we spend time, if we are able to, Lord, with, with our moms, uh, just be with us, Lord, and, and bless that fellowship, Father. I lift us up to you this day. And, and Father, I also lift up those uh, today where mom is no longer here. Lord, whether it's uh, recently, uh, Lord, uh, maybe it's been several years since mom has actually been here. Father, I want to pray, Lord God, for, for each one, uh, Lord, that you would just be with them. And Father, we are mindful this day that if, Lord, our moms walked with you, Lord, our, our hearts are comforted knowing that, Lord, they are with you now and they are rejoicing Lord, in your presence. But Lord, I pray for those uh, this morning that you would just touch them and be with, uh, Lord, them in a special way this day. Father, as again, we, we want to commit us, Lord, into your hands and in our, in our time together to you. Father, listen now as we say together the prayer that our Lord taught his first disciples in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. seated. Now I know for sure that I wasn't imagining this, but I, I thought I heard some little voices this morning. And uh, <laughs> I see some little people back there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, It's just been a long time, huh? It's been a long time since we've seen our, our little ones with us. But uh, we have hope for some good things ahead because we hope in the Lord. Amen? And he has some good things in store for each of us. I uh, wanted to just welcome back uh, Carolyn this morning. Carolyn, uh, back from... From Florida, I know that they were talking about weather in Florida, but I, I, I think it sounded like it was really nice, right? Is it really nice down there in Florida? I don't know. I didn't see the Weather Channel recently, <laughs> but uh, we're glad you're back, Carolyn. <laughs> Hopefully, you're glad to be back. It'll get nicer. It'll get nicer eventually. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, As we look at our prayer uh, list this morning, um, we want to continue. You know what? I didn't make it to the back. Did anybody write a prayer request uh, today? Okay, nothing, nothing on the one in the back. Um, I was able to talk briefly uh, to Dorothy Cornell. Um, but let's continue to remember uh, Dorothy and 
and Bill. Uh, when I talked with Dorothy, Bill was still in the hospital. Is, it, is Bill still in the hospital? Jim, okay, so Bill is still in the hospital, and, and Dorothy is still not walking, as, as far as I know. So this has been, uh, uh, I think we're going on five months now. Yeah, we're going on five months now for Dorothy. So uh, let's continue to remember uh, the family in our prayers also, too. Um, uh, continue prayer for... Uh, family of Larry uh, Moyer. This is uh, Carol Barth's uh, family there. It's nice to see Carol back this morning. Uh, also, Greg Hinchman. Uh, this is uh, Stacy Shotton's brother with lung cancer. Also, Mia and Janine, uh, daughter and granddaughter daughter of Nancy and Tom. Let's continue to remember them in our prayers. Uh, Josh Daniels. And also, I uh, didn't notice Ruth Ann with us uh, this morning, so continued prayer for uh, her husband, Jack. Um, I hope he is getting better. Is he getting better, um, Ruth Ann? He kind of struggles here. It's a long process. It's okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh. Oh. Thank you, uh, Janet. I didn't didn't realize that we've we've not had a back for so long. I haven't I haven't looked. Uh, but yes, family and friends of Gary Stiver. Uh, continued prayer for Lori. Henderson, this is Norma's daughter. Uh, Rachel, uh, this is uh, Larry's daughter. Is Larry here this morning? Okay, I don't see, I don't see Larry. And then also for Bonnie, this is uh, Charlotte's niece. Now, uh, Charlotte uh, did have uh, her second eye surgery uh, this past week. Uh, she's, doing, she's doing well, uh, so we're thankful for that. And we have also, uh, we have a praise. Kelly Bond is engaged. Okay, so we have a, a congratulations there for Kelly. I hope and, and trust that everyone is doing well in the Bond family. B just kind of went like that. I don't know what <laughs> that, that meant, but <laughs> Keith's was nodding yes, so we'll, we'll take that. We'll take that, Keith. Uh, okay. Okay. If there are no other uh, requests this morning, let's uh, let's take time and just to lift up uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ to the Lord, shall we? Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for the day, and we thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come as a, as a church family. Lord, before your throne, and uh, first of all, thank you, to thank you, Father, for your watch care, for being with us, uh, Lord, for traveling mercies and safety uh, through the week, and that, Lord, that we've been able to come uh, together uh, this morning. And so, Father, we do thank you, and we praise you for all of your many blessings. Father, we thank you for your, your presence with us. Uh, Lord, is, it's only once a week that we are able to see one another, but Lord, we're believing that as we uh, have our, our meeting, that Lord, uh, we're able to take time to look to you to see, Father, what you would have for us uh, as a church family here. And so Lord, we're trusting you with, Lord, the days and weeks to come, Father, for our future. Uh, we know, Lord God, that our hope is in you, and that, Lord, that uh, you are watching over us. And, Lord, it is only by your hand that, Lord, we've been able to be and able to come this far, uh, Lord, in our walk with you. So we do give you thanks and praise. And, Father, we do lift up, uh, Lord, each one of these 
uh, prayer requests, Lord. We have the ones that, uh, Lord, that we have not mentioned. Uh, but, Lord, you know each one. And, Father, we're asking that you would look upon them uh, and minister, Lord, to each heart. Uh, Father, we, we mentioned those that have been brought to us recently. And, and Lord, we're continuing to pray together, uh, Lord, that you would just do a, a, a mighty work, Lord, on, on their behalf. Uh, Lord, as we uh, think of Mia and Janine, as we've been praying for them, Lord, that you would uh, just touch their hearts, Lord, and just minister. And Father, just help them, uh, Lord God, in this, this time of need that, that they have. Father, as we place them into your hands. And uh, Lord, I'm not quite sure uh, about Josh, uh, Lord, everything that's, that's going and, and happening there. But, Lord, we want to just lift them up to you. As Nancy has uh, asked prayer for him, we pray that you would minister to him and, and touch him, Lord God, this day. Uh, Lord, we pray for Jack and Ruth Ann that you would uh, just be with them. And, and Father, as Ruth Ann shared, of, uh, Lord, there is much that's involved uh, a lot more than, than I realized that we realized, Lord, but we ask that uh, you would just be, be with him, Lord, and touch him in a special way and watch over him, Lord. And uh, Lord, as, as Ruth Ann shared about uh, how he just passes out, uh, Lord, we're asking, Lord, for your touch upon his life right now as we, as we place him in your hands, O oh Lord. And we, we want to continue to remember this morning uh, the family of, of Gary Stiver, that, Father, that you would be with them and that, Lord, you would uh, continue to comfort their hearts, Lord God. We know that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our strengthener in our time of need. So, Lord, be with, be with them, Lord, during this time. Uh, Lord, we pray for Norma and uh, her whole family right now as we know that there are uh, situations, Lord, with each of them and I believe even, Lord, some physical needs that, that Norma has herself. Uh, Lord, there is just much that's, that's happening and going on there. We ask, Lord, that you would look upon her and, Father, all the things that are, that are going on and, and minister to them. Lord, in a special way that, Lord, you would just, Lord, show up in their, in their lives and let them just sense your presence. Lord, we pray this morning and agree together. Just let them sense your presence, Lord, in a special way today as we place them into your hands. Father, we pray for Larry and um, his daughter Rachel as, as, Lord, that she has cancer right now. And also for Charlotte's niece, uh, Bonnie, who has cancer um, Father, we, we pray for these ones. We continue to pray, Lord, for Brenda, Lord, that you would be with, with each of them and touch them, Lord God, and let them know that you are there and that, Lord, you will provide the grace and the strength and the peace, Lord, that's, that's needed, uh, Lord, every step of the way as they are each on this path, Lord. But we want to lift them up to you, Father, that, uh, and place them into your hands, Lord, and into your care and your keeping. Lord, again, we, we thank you for uh, your, your love for us, for your grace and your mercy, that, Lord, that you have so richly bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you and we praise you, and I commit us, Lord, into your hands this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our hymn of communion this morning is number 30, Break Thou the Bread of Life. sacred 
As they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, much as our mothers loved us, your love for us is demonstrated by the sending of your Son to serve as a living sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. As we break this bread and drink this cup, we ask that you bless these emblems. Let your Spirit enter our hearts and fill the empty places with the kind of love you've shown us through your Son. Hold us firmly in your loving embrace as we confront the world around us in this new world. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jack. Praise the Lord. This past week, um, the Lord laid a, a certain individual from the Bible on my heart and uh, spent a lot of time looking into this person's life. And I know that when I mention uh, this person's name, that you'll, you'll recognize him right away. But as I learned this past week, there was <clears throat> quite a bit that I really didn't know about this one until actually taking the time and, and following through and reading. And I feel there's a, a very good reason why the Lord uh, had placed this individual on my heart. And as we go through the message this morning, you'll be able to be able to see that. And... That person's name is Timothy, okay? And some may be thinking, well, Pastor Bob, it's Mother's Day. You're going to talk about Timothy on Mother's Day? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, yes, I am. And we're going to see that uh, it has very much to do with, with Mom's Day. Moms and also grandmas because of the influence that they both had uh, on this young man and you know Timothy was not one of the original 12 apostles or even one of the the original 70 disciples that was there with the Lord and uh, how the Lord sent out the 70 and they were involved with uh, ministry for him and uh, we know that even afterwards, how the Lord got hold of Saul, <laughs> who became, you know, who was Paul. The Lord changed his name. Uh, he wasn't part of that, you know, that group. But if there was the next, the next level, so to speak, Timothy is right there. He's right there when you see how the Lord was able to to use this uh, this individual in in ministry. But what I want us to see, first of all, is the impact that uh, his mom and grandmother had on him and how that was very, very foundational uh, in his life. And you'll find that in uh, the letter called by his name. There's actually two of them, First and Second Timothy, uh, Paul writing to Again, this individual, we know that the Apostle Paul wrote to uh, churches, individual churches, and he also wrote to a group of churches uh, in Galatians, but there's uh, a few letters that he wrote just to one person, okay, and Timothy, Timothy is one of them, uh, as he referred to as his uh, true son in the faith, true son in the faith, and, and Paul and Timothy had a very, very special relationship between them. But what I wanted, I wanted to share this morning is kind of the beginnings of what we see about Timothy, okay? And you'll find that in uh, 2 Timothy, and I'm just going to begin reading as an intro uh, in chapter 1, these first few verses, okay? It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers day and night, 
greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. So as Paul begins this, this letter uh, to Timothy, he's, he's bringing up something that was, that was very important that he wanted to mention to him, and that is this genuine faith that he had. Not only did Timothy had it, but his mom had it, and his grandma had it. Now, I want us to think about this, how, you know, Timothy was a young man uh, when he came to know the Lord, but it says uh, in this particular portion of Scripture that his mom and his grandmother had this influence in his life, okay? He had this, they had this influence in their life, not only with their own walk with the Lord, but over in 2 Timothy, I wanted to read this as well, as he's uh, talking in, uh, to Timothy, He says, but as for you, continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, a little bit about the family. Timothy, his mom, uh, and his grandmother were converted Jews, but it talks about this in the book of Acts, but his, his father was a Greek. He was Greek, and it doesn't even mention as far as what dad's name was, okay? It doesn't mention his name. It doesn't talk about how he was there in the, the family uh, unit as far as when it came to the spiritual uh, uh, work that God was doing with, you know, with grandma, with mom, and with Timothy. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about him. So everything was being done by mom and grandma. Does that sound familiar at all? The influence, the influence that mom has and grandma has on our uh, young people your children and your grandchildren uh, is immeasurable. But you know what? There's a long period of time where you may not be seeing anything as far as your influence that you have had on your children. Because we don't know when Timothy came to Christ, okay? I mean, the foundation was there. There was the Word of God that was there. There was the example of mom and grandma as far as their faith that Timothy was able to see. And it wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice if everyone came to Jesus at the same time? Wouldn't that be great? All family, mom, all family members, mom, dad, kids, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, everyone. It would be great that we would just all come to Jesus right at the, at the same time. It doesn't happen, does it? There are different times that each of us come to faith in Jesus. Well, it was like that for for Timothy. And what I want us to see is when this possibly happened for him. Because I believe that it happened at a young age, but again, he had the foundation. He grew up being able to see and hear things about the Lord. But every one of us has to come individually to Jesus, right? This is an individual decision that we all make. It can't be, well, you know, standing before the Lord and says, well, you know what, mom knew you, dad knew you. No, we all need to have that personal relationship with Jesus. And we all come to him at different times. But we're all part of this process of God using each of us and God using us to plant seeds in our young people. 
We're planting seeds. We're always planting seeds, possibly watering those seeds, and pray somewhere along the way that somebody else can water those seeds too. Because every person that God brings into our lives, into our children's lives, our grandchildren's lives, every person has a part in this, in their salvation, okay? In their salvation. Of them coming to know the Lord Jesus for themselves. And we all have to have that. We all need to come to know him personally. Now, the time that, uh, as I was reading, that many are saying was the time that, that Timothy was able to hear the gospel and to hear it from Paul was a certain time in Paul's, one of his missionary journeys in Acts, when he went to their town and their city. And, and, and they preached the gospel, and they were able to hear it, okay? Now, this happened in Acts chapter 14, okay? Acts chapter 14. I just want to read a couple of verses. It says, Now, it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude of the Jews and the Greeks believed, okay? But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now, this city of Iconium, it was nearby another city of Lystra. That was home base. That was hometown as far as Timothy and his mom, his dad, and grandmother. Okay? And it says that um, in verse 4, the multitude, but the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region, and they were preaching the gospel there. So here we have, it was almost like this, this crusade, it was Paul's first missionary journey, he was preaching the gospel, and there were miracles that were happening, and people were believing. They were coming to Christ. They were accepting him as their Lord and Savior. There were those who were accepting, and over here there were those that were rejecting. That's how it goes. That's how it works. There are some that are going to believe and receive, and there's going to be some for a time that are going to say, no, thank you. No. I don't, I, don't, I don't want it. I don't want him. To the point where they were persecuting and wanted to stone them. But Timothy was there. Timoth Timoth Timothy was there. And shortly after, you'll read in chapter 16 of Acts, it says, on the second missionary journey, that he came to Derby and Lystra. Again, Lystra, the hometown of Timothy. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra, in Iconium. So here was this young man that had come to faith in Christ and hadn't been walking very long with the Lord, but he was well known in the towns. His life, he was, he was, he was beaming with the light of the Lord so much that it was like people were talking about him. It's almost like coming to Jesus for the first time. I want you to think back. Think back of when you came to Jesus for the first time. First time. You surrendered your life to him, and when, and when, the, when your eyes were open, and when it seemed like the, the blinds were open and the sun started shining in, and it was like, you know what? There was, there was a phrase that was, that was mentioned back a long time ago 
by, by those that uh, uh, in our circle, in our church, where they talked about this individual as being on fire for the Lord. Okay? On fire for the Lord. There was so much that was beaming forth from him, the light and love and life of Jesus Christ, to the point where everybody was talking about him. Have you seen Timothy? Have you talked to him? You you see what's going on in his life? You see the impact that Jesus was having on him? This is what happens when Jesus gets hold of a life. This is what happens. And what was the difference for Timothy? The whole process from a little child, mom and grandma, opening up the word of God, sharing and teaching and praying, praying for Timothy, praying for him. How many of you have prayed for lost loved ones recently? Do you have any lost loved ones still? Don't give up. Don't give up. Seeds have been planted. Those seeds have been watered. God has the next person in mind to come and meet with that person. And you know what? Maybe maybe it's a person like Paul. The apostle Paul was the one that came and engaged Timothy with the gospel. And Timothy was able to see something in Paul. You think Paul was on fire for the Lord in his life and ministry? I believe he was. How else would he be able to be stoned, left lying there? They gathered around him, and he gets up and, all right, where's the next town? Where's the next place? so that we can talk about the Lord to them. Oh, he had something. What he has, what he had, is no different than what we have. And what do we have? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in us. To where we, our light, our life, And remember what it was? He says, when I call to mind your genuine faith, genuine faith that's in you, in your mom, and in your grandmother. Do you know what genuine faith looks like? Do we really know what genuine faith in Jesus Christ looks looks like? Do we have examples I'm talking about the real thing here. It says genuine. You know, you know when something is genuine, it's the real McCoy, right? Like, like leather. Genuine leather. You know it's the real thing. It's not what? This imitation pleather, whatever you call it, stuff that almost kind of looks like it, kind of feels like it. Does it smell like it? No, because it's not real. He said, genuine faith, almost like a diamond. You got real diamonds, and you got what? You got the ones that are real shiny, but what what do they call it? Zirconium or something like that? It's like real, real, genuine faith. They had it. It impacted Timothy. He saw it in Paul. And I believe it was all part of what got hold of his heart. It got hold of his heart. What do our young people need now? They need to be able to look at somebody. Somebody's life. And say, you know what? That's real. That's real, and I want it. I had that almost 40 years ago. God sent somebody into my life. I was lost. 
I didn't have the Lord brought them along my path, and I seen a life that I couldn't figure out. I said, what is it about this guy? I know I ain't got it. Eventually, I found out what he had, and I knew that I didn't have him. I didn't have Jesus. And God used that person, not one, not two, several people. It's almost like he had me surrounded at my workplace at Eastco. Every department I went, there was another Christian waiting there for me that I had to work with. I had no choice but to work with another Christian. You know what it's like when you're not a Christian to have to work with a Christian? I'm sure we've seen that and done that, been there, bought the T-shirt. But God was working. He was working in my heart to let me know that he's real. And for some strange reason, he wanted me. (laughs) And he wants you too because he loves you. And he wants our children, our young people, All of them. He wants every one of them. There's not a person alive on the face of the earth right now that God does not want, does not love. He says he is long-suffering, not wanting any to perish. But he wants them, everyone, to come to repentance and to come to faith in his son. Every one of them. So where do we do? What do we do? Where do we go? Genuine faith in our life. They got to see genuine faith, a walk that is clear. I'm not saying perfect without any error ever or mistakes. I'm talking about a love for the Lord, faith in him, hope in his promises, and his life shining in us our walk and then our prayers our prayers you notice what Paul said remember without ceasing praying for you night and day I thought of this as a little definition in closing about what prayer is. And there's a lot of different words that the Bible gives us about what prayer is. But I'm just going to summarize it with this one and then we'll close. Prayer is love on its knees. Prayer is love on its knees. Let's pray as a church family for all of our children Okay, our children, our grandchildren, maybe even our great-grandchildren for God to touch them and to bring them to himself. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time today this time in your word and just time for your Holy Spirit Lord to minister to our hearts to teach to instruct us encourage us to continue to walk to continue moving forward to continue praying and not give up. Lord, so many, so many things in your word, we, we hear that, that we, we need to pray and not faint, not give up. Father, first help us, Lord, to allow your life and your light to shine forth. 
that, Lord, our children would see that genuine faith in us, the real thing. And they would be able to know that this is not some wild pipe dream that we have, not some silly little fable or fairy tale. This is truth. This is real. We may be the only Jesus that they'll ever see and hear. But Lord, we pray that others would impact their life as well. Not only us. Lord, wherever they may be, their travels in life, seeds that we planted, Lord, that somebody else, Lord, that you would bring somebody else that would have an impact, Lord, on them, that they would be able to see it not only in us, but outside of us. Lord, you know what it's going to take. And you know the person that needs to be sent, just like you knew it would be Paul to reach Timothy. Lord, there may be, even be someone, Lord, that we can go to and talk to, that we can reach, Lord, that you can reach through us. So, Lord, we just want to be open to you. And, Lord, we lift, Lord, each one, all of our family to you. And we're praying, Lord. We're going to keep praying. Lord, we'll even set aside certain times that we can be praying for anyone, Lord, in our family who does not yet know you and is not at that place where, Lord, you want them to be. Not just where we want them to be, Lord, that you desire them to be. Lord, do miracles and and wonders. Change hearts and lives. For we ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just the closer walk with thee. Number 591, would you stand please?
daily walking close to thee yes lord let it be dear lord let it be when my feeble life is Gently, safely home to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Let's sing it from our hearts. Just a closer walk with thee. Thank you, Lord. Grant Jesus is my plea. Guide me gently, safely home to thy Lord. Let it be. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your presence with us and your word. Father, write this on the tablet of our hearts. Lord, let it be always before us. Lord God, that if we call, you're going to answer and show us great and mighty things that we do not know. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Father, I commit us into your hands today. In Jesus' name. And we all said, amen and amen. Bless you.